Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Shorts. Today's plant of interest will be the husk tomato, also known as the tomatillo. In this particular case, this specimen has just started to really pop. I mean, look at that. It was about a third, no, a fourth this size, and in fact, there are the first flowers on it. Now, husk tomatoes are ultimately in the nightshade family. They are sort of a weird angle off-center relative. There are a lot of nightshades in the Americas. Its scientific name is Physalus philadelphica, though there are a version of it called Physalus ixocarpa. The word Physalus is from ancient Greek. It means bladder wind instrument and also to blow up. Now what that means is that the fruit inside the husk tends to expand and burst the husk like an inflating wind instrument. Makes sense. A little bit weird, but okay. The husk serves to protect the fruit while it's developing from a lot of things because it's inedible and gross. Often, if you miss a fruit, you'll find the dried structural remains of the, the husk and the dried remains of the fruit still inside of it with the seeds and all. It's an evolutionary tactic to guarantee that the seeds go on for the next generation. There is also a native version of this. It's either a ground cherry or a husk tomato in the tomatillo style that is native to this region and is perennial. This isn't it, and I'd love to find it, but in the meanwhile. The fruit of a husk tomato can be eaten raw or it can be cooked, usually into a dish called salsa verde. And if you've ever had that, boy does it blow the doors off guacamole. Mm. Now, the interesting thing is that the oldest known fossil of this plant was found in the Patagonian region of Argentina. They estimate that it's 52 million years old. That's some serious business. These suckers have been evolving in South America for a very long time. What's most interesting about them in the, as far as a garden plant is, is that you basically treat them more like an eggplant than you do a tomato. You fertilize them, you give them good soil and regular water, and they reward you with boatloads of fruit. This plant here is actually a cluster of several plants because I dropped the seed the wrong way. It's bushy as heck, they're going to work together. This plant's probably going to get huge, and unfortunately I think I underestimated the pot size, which I'll zoom down so y'all can see. That's a 12-incher. I probably should have given it a 14 or better. In the garden, it's going to pretty much look like this. It's not going to have showy flowers. It's not going to be a pretty color unless you get the pink tomatillos. These are green. But it's drought resistant. Pardon me. It is drought resistant. It doesn't get pests. It doesn't get diseases. This is mostly because its genetics, while they have been improved over the ages, are almost identical to its weed format. It's a wild plant that we just happen to cultivate and we get along with. And that's pretty much all you need to know about the tomatillo. Same fertilizer as a tomato, and you'll get all kinds of juicy fruit by the end of the year. Stay tuned for the next episode, look for a link to the blog, and as always, keep them growing, folks.